right guys this is Ralph Greenwood another episode of the car barn we're looking at truck mounted couplers and before you I've got three of them here these this one right here is the short this is the um, barber rolling bearing truck with short extensions roller bearing trucks with short extensions um, this is short number 1030. Okay. And then this one here is the medium barber rolling roller bearing trucks, medium extension. The short number for this one is 1024. And this is the roller bearing trucks with long extensions this the short number for this one is 1038 and you can see the difference in the length of this draft here but all three of these are roller bearing trucks these are for in scale micro trains Okay, now I'm going to discuss hydro cushioning or underframe cushioning as it's referred to. This affects the distance between cars when you couple them up. Okay, and there's a guy, his name was William K. McCurdy, and he was with the Stanford Research Institute and the SRI they tested what they called hydrofriction. They tested this theory in 1954 because they wanted to reduce the damage from cargo that was being shipped in boxcars. And because when the train slowed down or when it sped up or it stopped, you know, stuff was getting broken. So and then they tested hydro friction in 1954 SRI and then again that what they did was they tested that they made some changes and in April of 1956 the SRI Institute they built the the uh, the hydro cushion into 350 Southern Pacific cars and then they used this and they did they did research and they found out that the by using this technology this spring some of them were springs and then later they had hydraulic um, but this it, it absorbed the tension from when the train slowed down and when the train sped up and they found out in this research with southern pacific that they reduced their amount of damage to one quarter of what it previously was basically cut it down by 75 percent so it was a major um, breakthrough in railroad technology that uh, helped with the success of the railroad had now to cushion under frame and also i went to um I looked it up on Google Books. There was a book. It is called The Model Railroader's Guide to, to Railroad Cars. I believe that's what it's called. I'm going to put a link to it in the description of this video. And in that book, I, I read, I, look, I do not have the hard copy. I am going to get one. But I read that um, the cushion under frame, it was first used on boxcars. Eventually, it was used on auto racks, on piggyback, piggyback flats, and coil cars. Um, and it also said in that book, it was not used for bulk products, cars that they transfer bulk products like tank cars, hoppers, and covered hoppers. Like, like these right here. Okay. Now... In addition to going and looking at the Google Books, okay, I did go to 
the model railroader forum okay now i'm not actually going to put a link to that but you can google it up um and i asked i i had googled up like the space between each each rail car if there was like a set length that there should be and i saw some responses um there were two of them that were very very similar um the one guy who was he has a model railroad he's had one for years he's he's pretty in depth with it he said that there is no um there is no set distance between two cars that are coupled it depends a lot on the on the type of the car um even on the manufacturer manufacturers they may have different lengths or different clearances they want but he said that with the cushion under frame that they there's usually more space and he said that they the the cars whether they have cushion under frame or not he said that it ranged from three feet this is in one to one scale three feet to five feet was the figure that he gave and another guy came on there and said about the same thing okay so and then you hear people ask well should i have medium couplers like for instance these these uh i think these are a 60 50 or 60 foot hopper here i've got short extensions on these and to me th this looks this looks pretty good now the three to five feet in in scale okay would be 0.225 inches up to 0 0.375. 0 0.325 would be about 730 seconds and 0.375 would be 3 eighths of an inch. Now if you're doing HO scale that is that would be and I came up I converted it it was thir it was 1330 seconds that would be your about your three feet and then 11 sixteenths would be about your five feet. Okay, if you were doing HO scale, that would be your, your, your range of distance. Okay, so that's why these hopper cars do not have hydro cushioning. So there, this would be considerably smaller. And right here, I'm thinking I got like about a quarter of an inch. So, yeah, a quarter of an inch between those two. That looks fairly good to me. The thing that I don't like is these right here because, <coughs> excuse me, this looks a little short. Even for 40-foot cars, it looks a little short. And then when you look at these 50-footers here, and by the way, this one here, it says hydro cushion right on the side. Look at this gap right here. Now, if I put shorts on those, okay, if I put short, th these are short extensions on here. These would be too close with short extensions, I think. But with medium, st medium extensions, it looks a little too long to me. I mean, that's definitely more than... That's definitely more than five feet in end scale. I can tell you that. But, and I don't really want to go with body mounted couplers, but I might, or I might figure out some way to maybe shorten this distance a little bit. But these hopper cars, they're working out just fine. I think, and I'm not, even with this short gap here, I'm not having any problems with the curves on mine. Um, my, uh, my width here is 36, so I'm going to say that my, my uh, track radius, my curves, would be 
16 inches. Some of them might be uh, 15. But I've ran these around here and haven't had any trouble. Okay. So, and let me see if I covered everything. Yeah, see I just put, now these still have the short ones on the ends. Okay, and we'll switch those around here. Okay, now you can see I've, I've switched these around. There's only about an eighth of an inch in between these. Well, an eighth of an inch is, is 4 30 seconds. That is still less than 7 30 seconds, which would be 3 feet. So, now, I really don't want this. With the 40-foot boxcars, I'm not too worried. But with these, uh, I don't know. I'm going to have to come up with something, some way to stretch these out a little bit. And I'll be working on that. Now, I will do be doing body mount couplers. I do have the, um, I've got the equipment to do it. And I have a few of them here. I don't have them for, well, let's see. I do have, uh, are these, oh, they're right here. Okay. I've got these. Now, these are short shank. See, I might have to go with uh, maybe a longer shank, but I'd have to size things up and, and see what's going on there. So I'll show you guys another example. This is a Monsanto. It's a card that they put um, canisters of gas in. Now, I would uh, venture to say that they would have some form of cushioning on this so I'm probably not going to use shorts I'll probably use mediums I don't know I'll have to put them on there and see how they look I want to tell you guys I'm going to be doing more weathering I I have a special episode coming up also that is where I'm going to answer the questions that some of you guys have asked me and I'm going to ask you guys for more input so, you guys have a great day. Happy railroading. Take it easy. See you guys later.